James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is June 30th, 2023, 11.30 a.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had something really affecting our electromagnetic shield for the last three and a half, four hours. We can see here that our shield's been hit from either Earth's side or the outside. We're not quite sure at this point. And we do see spikes that exceed six, seven, eight hundred hertz and maybe even higher throughout here. These could be spikes that go off the chart. Very hard to tell, but I do see the red lines that exceed 1500 hertz. Wow. Now, the majority of these spikes are around the five to six hundred hertz mark, which is very powerful compared to what we're used to seeing. Now, usually when we see that electromagnetic field getting pounded, we see our Schumann resonance going off. And this is incredible. This started about, well, 1245 UTC time. It's gone through 1600 UTC time. We're at at least 1630, 1700 UTC time, which tells us we've seen over four hours of Schumann resonance off the charts without any exception. These charts end at 105 hertz. Very strong spikes. I hope you all remember that before 2017, the Schumann resonance had never gone or been measured above 37 hertz. That's why so many of the charts end at 40 hertz. Now, we did have seven days of quiet with some minor activity in the Schumann residence. This is a six-day comparison. Three days ago, early morning, UTC time, we saw some intensive spiking. Yesterday, we saw some very strange spikes with one spike completely off the charts. And we saw that CERN was doing all kinds of crazy things. Today, we just see a solid off-the-chart situation that lasts approximately three and a half to four hours. So, the off-the-charts in this model is going to be 50 hertz, and these exceed 50 hertz. And we know they also exceed 105 hertz, so they're very, very strong. Let's continue, folks. All right, over to the hourly strips that are actually separated by quarter hours. We can see that two hours, the last two hours, have not been included on this model yet. But the previous two hours from that are extensive geophone hits. I'm positive that the next few hours, that would be 1500 UTC time above what we can see. 1600 UTC time and we're currently in some part of 1700 UTC time all not included on this geophone strip hits these are intensive hits on our geophones now we see yesterday's spike that was off the charts over here and it didn't even clear 18 hertz according to the modeling information here we have stronger spikes today, and it looks like they started right about 1300 UTC time. That's going to be important. I want you all to remember that. 1300 UTC time, and that's going to go to 14 to 15 to 16. We're missing some time, but it looks like the spikes are actually coming down. Now, they could have shot back up because we're not seeing up-to-date information. This is lagging by at least... 30 minutes as well. All of our sensors are reacting. Our geophones in uh, green got hit hard. Our ULF noise, our ELF noise indicators, and our second SR frequency took a dip. It dips when actually activated the other spike, and you can see that everything coincides, meaning this is an actual 
impact of some sort or the earth is expelling something. Those are our only two options here. Heading over to the Russian Tomsk model, we also see very strong hits. These occurred before the Italian models hits. This would kind of indicate that as the globe turns, it's being hit by an outside force. Now let's see how many hours, this is the Tomsk time Russian model. You're seeing what's called Tomsk time. Actually a different time here. It's UTC plus seven hours. What's so weird here is this started at right around 1300 UTC time and ended about 1730. Exactly what we're looking at via UTC time but a difference of seven hours via the two time periods or time measurements. So here again, we have about four and a half hours of spiking. A lot of it is off the charts. The charts here end at 40 hertz. And again, that's most probably because the Schumann resonance was never measured over 37 hertz when most of these models were built. Let's continue. Now these are our KP indexes, just different indexes, and it always seems that our college index is more sensitive. Today it has the last six hours as a geomagnetic disturbance, and today is June 30th, 2023. So this does in fact partially coincide with what we're seeing on the Italian model and I don't think that this is what is causing that. We don't see it on the estimated planetary index or Fredericksburg index or the Boulder index. Although again the college index has seemed to be more sensitive to changes in space weather. We're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the space weather itself to see what might have caused this if anything. This is our real-time plasma and real-time solar winds. And we do see that there's been some action, some plasma here. 10 centimeters cubed is the space weather indication. This did break above it. And there's a gap of time that looks like it started around uh, 1130 UTC time. Jumped up right before 12 UTC time. And this somewhat corresponds with what we're seeing. But this is not a very strong spike in plasma. We also have solar winds spiking up from 478 to a peak of 600 kilometers per second. That just about leaves me speechless. And we also see that peak uh, is followed by the temperature heating up. Now again, I see no space weather indications here. And I do see one thing here that's unique. It looks like our magnetic shields have shifted to the southern part of the planet here. And that's for a long period of time. This may or may not be the cause of these models in the north actually reacting like they have. But again, this started at, at 1 UTC time and is ongoing through 16, 1700 UTC time. So that doesn't match up either. And we've often seen that there is no space weather when the Schumann resonance spikes are going through the roof. Lastly, let's take a look at CERN. All right, here we can see that they have been playing with CERN all day. By playing, I mean it keeps going on and off. And the beams are both at about 6,000 GeV, which is about 12 TeV. The machine's maximum is supposed to be 15 TeV. You can see they were higher than that, so they're messing with the higher limits of the machine. And we also see instantaneous luminosity kick in at when? Right about 1300 UTC time, going till about now. And I don't know if it's subsided or not. We just don't have enough data. This is 1700 and we're almost to 1800 UTC time. What I would like to say is that CERN manipulates hertz and frequency. And I believe that they are trying to either view or enter a 
higher dimension using these machines. They are currently building at least three more of these machines that will be almost twice as powerful as the LHC, Large Hydron Collider here at CERN. Uh, those will not be complete till 2026 and could be the end of mankind as we know it, in my opinion. Obviously, this is too much power for mankind to be messing with. And these time periods of luminosity correspond pretty well. Let me know your thoughts. If you were able to sense the Schumann resonance, how it affects you, if it's a physical effect, a psychological, mental effect, or both. And lastly, I'd like to say that many studies of the Schumann resonance have shown that spikes in the Schumann resonance up to about 14 hertz have shown to be beneficial to humans, both, both cognitively and physically, as long as that Schumann resonance returns to its resting state at 7.83 to allow rejuvenation. God bless, share, and subscribe. Always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.